In the last video, I talked about how to use Photoshop to remove the line work from your drawing. And in this process, you're turning your drawing into a full-fledged painting. But what I didn't answer is, what are you going to replace it with? How are these edges going to relate to the image that you're working with? Well, really the only place that this discussion can begin is talking about what a line is to begin with. So what's a line? But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. Here is a simple line drawing. You can immediately recognize it as a box or maybe a die that you would roll, but it doesn't have much to do with real life. If you picked up one of these objects and held it in front of you, you wouldn't see any black lines. It might look more like this. Each of the surfaces are at a different angle to the light, so as a result, they have a different value. They have a different lightness or darkness. And what we represent as a line is really just where two of these surfaces butt up against one another. But in almost every case, you don't have a razor sharp edge that the line might indicate. In fact, this isn't a very realistic cube because these edges are too perfectly sharp. So when a drawing turns into a painting, you have to consider these transitions. As you go from one surface to the next, what would that feel like? Well, if this were a die, you'd probably have a bit more of a soft, rounded corner, a little bit of a bevel. And so I can indicate that with a soft brush here, just to show you what that looks like. So all of a sudden, this is way different than any single line could represent. And so as you get rid of the lines in your painting and begin to replace them with transitions from surface to surface, what you're doing is describing the form much more descriptively. And in this case, it's actually going to change the silhouette of the cube a little bit. It would be a little more chamfered off there. And at a micro level, this is much more like a real object. So giving a little special attention to where one surface butted up against the next surface on our cube made all the difference in the world. And that should help explain why when you turn the lines off on the skull, all of a sudden it reveals that the painting is really lacking. Because what those black lines are doing is covering up the crucial transition between one surface and another. And when you hide them, you can see the real truth, which is, well, you didn't spend much time on the area where one area of value butts up against the next area of value. So how I decide to make this transition says a lot about the form. And I don't want a perfectly sharp edge because that would be a little too mechanical. Nothing in our body is a 90 degree angle. And if I go too soft, it won't look right. So this area as these two values transition from one to the other is really describing the form. And using value in this way, specifically values transitioning into other values, is really how the viewer's eye is going to determine the three-dimensionality of these objects. So you might be wondering, well, when would I use a soft edge versus a hard edge? In this case, I've got reference to look at. So it's really just a case of looking at my source material and trying to replicate what I see. But if you're making something up, or just want to use a good rule of thumb, remember that the more distinct the transition, like this hard line between gray and white, that means that it's a really sharp angle, just like the box. But if it's a very soft transition, like this one here, that means it's a very shallow angle. And so you can see here this ridge transitions from sharp into very soft. And that tells you something about the form. Another good rule of thumb is that the edge of a silhouette, like where this skull touches the background, is generally going to be a little softer. This is especially important with soft materials like skin. You really don't want skin to have a hard, rigid look to it. Generally putting a little bit of a softer edge around the silhouette will give it the more lifelike quality. So you could say that external edges, or the boundary of a form, is going to be a softer edge, 
where interior edges, like the ridge of this eye socket, might have a little harder of a transition. So you'd have a little more contrast. So I painted a little while longer and I hid all of the lines. So you can see that this is by no means a finished painting, but anywhere where there was some sloppiness that was previously hidden underneath those lines, I've now cleaned up into an intentional transition from one area of value into another area of value. And this is no easy thing. As you get better and better at painting, a lot of what's improving is your ability to intentionally transition from one face or surface to the next surface. And how that transition is, whether it's soft or hard or some combination, tells the whole story of the form. So this is not going to be a quick learning process. Hopefully these videos, though, showed you at least where to start and how to use Photoshop to accomplish it. Thanks for watching, guys.